We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Lord, you have brought us once again into your house. And we believe that what you have proposed in your heart to do today, you will do it perfectly well. We therefore ask, O oh Jesus, that you speak to us today. May your word give life to our dead bones. May your word wake us up once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs eleven twenty four to 31. There is that scattered, and yet increaseth, and there is that, there is that which holdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth come, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. And he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusted in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. Our main test is from verse 30. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth his soul is, is what? Is wise. 31. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Praise the living God. Verse 24 says, There is that scattered. There is that scattered and yet increased. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to, tendeth to poverty. The topic of today is be wise, be a soul winner. Be wise. Be a soul winner. I want to look at time in terms of soul winning, our individual time. The main test is verse 30, but I want to draw our attention to the verse 24. There is he that scattered. Uh, if you can put the NIV version, please put it on the screen. There is one who scatters abroad, yet he has every time. He continues to have every time. But there is one who does not give at all. One person gives freely, gives his time freely to evangelism, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, unnecessarily, but comes to poverty. Praise the Lord. Every time people say, there is no time. Time for evangelism? Oh, I don't have time. I have very tight schedule. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. There are others who see their time as the time of evangelism. Before they have time for any other thing. There are those who have dedicated the whole of their time to evangelism. Paul said, 
Though I am the least of the apostles, like one that was born uh, late, but I, by the grace of God upon my life, I work more than them all. Some people said Paul was married. Some others said he never married. But one thing is very sure, that whether he was married before or not, he was going alone. He left his family. Everybody has family. Either immediate family or extended family. Everybody has family. But Paul was always moving alone. Always, the whole of his life, after his conversion, he lived it for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, for me, to live is Christ, and to die is what? And he was not saying it that if I die is gain because he was an arm robber. He so much gave the whole, he, never, he did not just give his time, he gave his time, his resources, he gave his knowledge, his wealth of wisdom. He gave everything to the gospel of Jesus Christ and also the whole of his life. Look at the level of dedication. The level of sacrifice. No time. No time. No time. No time. Jesus said, among all men, born of woman, there is no one that is greater than John. John the Baptist. And if you look at the whole of the life of this time, this man, tell me any moment of his life, as we have in the records, any moment of the life of John the Baptist that he spent for his time, for his own self. Was there any time? The man had to live, he's supposed to be a priest. He was born, you know, priesthood in Israel is by inheritance. If you are not a Levite, you can never be a priest. His father was a priest. So, giving birth to him, he's supposed to be a priest. But this man had another assignment that was greater than that, that one. A voice crying in the wilderness. So, he decided, instead of becoming a priest, he chose to be a voice. Where he never had lights. There was even no time for him to have a farm. The Bible says that let him who will not walk, let him not do what? Let him not eat. This man had no time to walk. And instead of him to beg to preach, he decided to eat locust and wild honey. Wild honey. That was his food. He had no clothes upon himself. No clothes. No clothes. No time to get clothes. He just wore garments of skin. Garment like Elijah. Garment of skin. And he was so satisfied with his life. What have you given to the gospel of Jesus Christ? In preaching it. When we look at those who have lived before, look at the church fathers, those who paid sacrifices, those who carried their own lives in their own hands and went to preach. If you look at them, their lives and you are not inspired, something is wrong. There is one that withholds it. Unnecessarily. Let's go in for evangelism. No time. Let us go out to preach. Let's talk to this brother. No time. No time. There are reasons God sends people to go and preach. Number one, to save that person's soul. There is another reason. So that the word you are speaking to that person can be a witness against that person. On the day of judgment. There are some people. God knows. That these people will never repent. But he will still send you to them. 
In fact, when God was sending Moses to Pharaoh, God told Moses clearly. Initially, there was an argument. And then God said, okay, for people to believe you, for Pharaoh to believe, perform these signs. And when he went there, he performed those signs. When he went back to God, even after Pharaoh increased their labor, God told Moses, he will not listen to you because I have hardened his heart. But number of times, and even after then, God sent Moses to him. There are some people God will send you to go and talk to them. Though I know they will not repent, but the Bible says, God said, whether they hear you or not, do what? Talk to them. Tell them the truth, because I have made you a watchman. How long does it take for a believer to preach Jesus Christ? Some of us, we feel we are not matured enough. If you have come to Jesus Christ, yet you have not yet ad adjusted your timetable, something is still wrong. If you have received the gospel, once you have believed in the name of Jesus and you are saved, you're supposed to readjust your time. As you see now, the earth is passing away. The world is passing. I was thinking about this thing this morning. As I was taking my bath, I said the earth is passing away. Stop running after the earth. Run after things that we endure. The earth is running away. A young man sold one of his kidneys to buy iPhone. Yes. And his parents did not know. He sold one of his kidneys to buy iPhone. How did they know? The people, the doctors that carried out the illegal operation did not do it well. And he, was, he had infection. When some people are giving up their lives for the sake of the gospel, let me tell you, even if you say, nobody should preach in worry, me, I will preach. I tell you the truth. It's better to die for a good reason. People say, the good when I do not go kill me, the good thing I do will not kill me. Me, it will kill me. Is it the good that should kill me? I mean, is it the bad thing I do should kill me? And should I die for the bad things I have done? If I have done anything bad, God should forgive me and correct me. But for the good reason, we should be ready to die for a good reason. And some of us, some people will say, eh, after all, man must die one day. So now woman won't kill you. Eh? I'm telling you, I've lived in a place, Utokwa East, in a village. There, people see sex as God. And somebody, if sometimes they want to describe the beauty of the woman, they say, ah, the woman, so beautiful that, she is so beautiful that, even if they ask you to have a moment with her, sleep with her, and die the next minute, you will say yes. People can risk their life because of earthly things. And you see people going for money ritual. Money ritual. Even if they tell them you will live for only 40 years, they say no problem. I just want God punish poverty. I just want to punish poverty. And they are ready. People don't care. They don't care about their lives when it comes to the things of this world. They don't care. It's none of their business. They want to make a name. But when it comes to preaching the word of God, I have seen women when they go to bush markets and they overload, maybe it is a sheep, they will overbuy goods. Or probably they will not go to the market because of their engagement. They won't go to the market uh, sooner. They will buy extra loads and overload the vehicle. Women, they will still climb on top. Some, 
they will risk their lives. And when you see them coming, sitting on top of Gary, any little mistake of the vehicle can make them to fall. Why are they doing it? They need money. Money. But when it comes to giving our time to the word of God, when I was in the hospital as administrator, St. Andrew's Hospital, there was one of our reverends who came one day and he was sick. He was on the hospital bed. So normally I move around. So I went to him to greet him. He told me, my brother, thank God for this sickness. Thank God for this sickness. When I was sick, I was questioning myself. Why, why, why now? Why should I be sick? Why should I be sick? He said, but on this bed, my God has corrected me all my mistakes. I say, I'm leaving this bed now. I am going to live here as a new person. A lot of times we say, no time, no time, no time. Even when God is trying to talk to us, because we are so busy. So it takes God some level of wisdom to knock us down before he can speak to us. Before he can give us correction. May the Lord help us. How many of us go out to preach? How many of us still preach? In those days, people used to share tracks. Today, how many people share tracks? Even people that are deaf and dumb, they preach. Even those who are blind, they preach. Do you preach? No time, no time, no time, no time. There is time. You say it is the 24 hours you have. It is the same 24 hours that the missionaries have. There are some people, for a very long time, they will not see their families. I have seen people who will just take their transport and any little money they have, and they will just go out and start preaching. Go to places they don't know. They will stay for months. Even when there was no telephone, their families will not hear from them. They will just be moving, preaching. And when you see them sometimes for days, they will not take their baths. Number of times, they will not eat. For the sake of what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. The same way they received it. That is the same way we also received it. Painfully, when people want to preach today, they want to make money. Money. Freely you receive? No. Costly you give. Receive it freely. That is the scripture today. You receive Jesus Christ freely. Receive salvation freely. And give it out with a price that the poor man cannot afford. There are churches that before you can enter into the church building to worship, you must be a subscriber. Do I have witness in the house? You must be paying. That is what I mean. You must be paying for membership. Do I have any witness in the house? You have a card. Eh? Even before you can, I don't want to call any church. You have to be paying. And if you do not go for a number of weeks, your subscription will expire. So you don't just go there any day that I want to worship God. No. You have to pay because the AC is money. The floor is money. The chair you are sitting in is money. Even the preacher himself, he does manicure and pedicure. And it's money. Who told you there are no preachers who don't do manicure and pedicure? They do. They are fingernails, they are toes, they are special people that care for them and brush everything and paint them. I mean men, men. I don't want to call anybody's name. And their hair permits very well. Me that don't even to cope my hair sometimes becomes a challenge. And my nails sometimes so even cut them becomes a challenge. 
I will not have so much time to go to saloon. What are you going to saloon for? To dress my knees. Knees or knees. And pay from the offering of the members. We have so become, a lot of us preachers have become celebrities. Instead of servants. No more servants again. But celebrities. And second Jesus. Assistant God. Assistant Jesus. We have grown so big that before we can go to preach the word of God, there is a minimum amount that must be deposited in our accounts. Vicar was telling us, said that he was, they, they were inviting him and they asked him, what is your worth? That means, what can we give to you first before you can move? Because, why were they asking? Because people have invited people who will tell them, my worth is one million naira, Five-star hotel. And you must give me bodyguard. Before you can preach the message you receive freely. And I tell you, many of those people are never saved. They were not saved. Vicar said, he told them, my worth, freely I receive. Freely I do what I give. No worth. How are you using your time? If you fall sick, won't you have the time? Eh? May God deliver us. If there is a court case, won't there be time? Or do you think that it is only somebody that is careful in life that does not have a court case? Even if they come to take your life, you say, well, I don't need a court case. Go, I don't want to waste my time. They come to take your wife. You say, no, uh, this woman, do you love me or you don't love me? He say, no, I don't love you again. Repeat it again. For the third time to be sure, you say, I don't love you. Okay, go, I don't want to quarrel. If God's grace does not support you, you can still have a court case. I read a story that was forwarded to me. Somebody who stayed in prison for over 30 something years. How? He went to buy things. Goats, animals. And as he was pricing, so they were interpreting for him. It was not the first time he went to that market. He, a young man, police came and arrested him that they were looking for some people. And he stayed there for over three decades. And became old. He was falsely arrested. For over 30 years, I think, he was there. He went there as a young man. He came out from there as an old man. When Paul knew how important his time was to him, even in prison, in prison, he was still praising God, singing worship to God. And many of the letters you see, they were written in the prison. In the prison. A lot of times, we don't have time when we are traveling. So we prefer to put earpiece in our ears and begin to uh, and just listen to music or tell stories about Mayu, the blues. Some of us, we don't know the names of our pastors. But we know the names of all the players in Manchester United. Some of us, we don't know the names of the apostles of Jesus Christ, the disciples. Only 12, 12 of them. We don't know their names. But we know the names of all the footballers. Even their age. The amount they are paid. Everything is in our head. But the Jesus that is protecting us, we can't speak for him. Give God your time. The Bible says there is one that scattered, he gives, and he is always having. When you are the type that preaches to people, the angels of you can't do the work of God alone. 
If there is anything that God so much loves, it is preaching. Whenever you are preaching and you, you have not cooked any lie to present to the people, and the Lord sees your heart that you have a genuine reason, you want to speak his word. Because the word is his own. And because the hearts of the people you want to talk to are all that captive, that the devil has blinded the minds of those, according to 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Satan has blinded their minds, covered their minds with darkness. The Holy Spirit knows, God knows that when you speak to them, they will not listen. Because the word you want to speak is spiritual. And the people you want to talk to are carnal. The word you want to tell them, the word you want to tell them is foolishness to the honorable man. But to God, there's a power of God unto salvation to them that believe. So God will now send his Holy Spirit. You speak, the Holy Spirit done the conviction, convince the people. Eh? Convict them. Convict. They will become pricked to the heart. When Peter was preaching, they were convinced. And then God, the Holy Spirit, convicted them. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the Holy Spirit converts them. So there is no need to lie when you are preaching to impress people. Because your own is just to speak the word. The Holy Spirit's work is to impress the word on the hearts of your hearers. So when you are in the business of always preaching, God will assign an angel at least or angels to you. That whenever you go out, the angels, it be, if it becomes a routine, the angels will know that by so so time, this sister will be going out to preach. So they will make themselves available. And when there is an accident on the way, the angels of God will say, no, this is our partner. And they fight the unseen battle for you. When you are useful in the house of God, when you are useful in the preaching of the gospel, God Almighty will become, we see you as a very relevant human being in the world. The Bible says that he that beareth much fruit, John chapter 15, my father pruneth. Eh? Do you know what it means to prune? My father will dress him. Remove all the infected parts. He will remove all the troubles so that he can bear much fruits. So if you are useful to the kingdom, God will not be working for you. You are out preaching. God is at home doing something for you. There is a song we sing. Don't you know this song? Eh? I will do my father work before my work. Hallelujah. Eh. I will do my father's work first. Okay, apart from preaching the word of God, what else did Jesus do in this world? Did he have a farm? Don't you know that there were many times Jesus went hungry? There were times they never had money? A lot of people, preachers, they will say, because they want, to, uh, they want you to believe that they are not greedy. Eh? Some of these wealthy preachers who fly aeroplanes, and the, aeroplane, the aeroplanes will be passing the roof of those who are dying of hunger around them. Eh? And those who are dying of hunger are looking at them and saying, this is our papa, God bless you, God bless you. And they don't see anything wrong in giving money to somebody who lavishes the money on useless things. If I will live my life to a time that I will be tying a wristwatch of 500,000 naira, I need a brain surgery. In this world, I'm telling you the truth. If I will tie a wristwatch of 200,000 naira, even a hundred thousand naira, I'm talking about till I leave this world. It means I need a brain surgery. Because that hundred thousand naira can correct a child's foot. Do you know all the children that they give battle that has club foot? Eh? The foot is twisted. They can't wear shoe. That 
100,000 naira can correct that thing. And the person will be free all his or her life and wear shoes and live well. They will tell us that Jesus lived as a big man, that the biggest car then was a donkey. It was all these things they just cooked them. There were times Jesus stayed without food. There was a time they supposed to, even it would have been possible for the tax collectors to have stopped them from entering the temple because they had no money to pay for the temple tax. No cover. And Jesus had to send Peter to go and catch a fish. The first one you catch, open his, search his mouth. You are going to see coins there. Use it to pay for yourself and for me. Even the tomb in those days, if you are a man and you are man enough, before you die, you have to dig a tomb for yourself. Jesus had no money to dig a tomb. I mean, his own grave. As after his death, there was nowhere to lay him. And you said that man lived big. Jesus, Jesus was giving money to the poor. As at when Jesus was telling the uh, Judas Iscariot that do fast and what you want to do, do it quickly after the Last Supper. The Bible says that the disciples thought they were telling him to give some foods, to give some, whether some money to the needy. That means it was their tradition. Even though he had no job, he was not a tent maker. He had the out of the little they were giving to them, they were saving to give to people. They were still giving to the poor. So it was not just preaching. How many of us are ready to go and preach and not sell the gospel of Jesus Christ? Today, anybody that can hash the egg of a lizard will no longer work well in the name of miracle. Person will start, and members are lying down for them. Be on your feet. There may be one or two persons here the Lord will call to go into full-time ministry. If you go there and you sell the gospel, this world will judge you. Because freely we receive, freely we give. Not to buy a place, but to save souls. Be wise. Be a soul winner. Not somebody that will buy empires all over the world in the name of, I'm a man of God. God is not poor. Jesus took away my poverty. So when he takes away your poverty and gives you wealth, should those around you die of hunger? Eh? Tell the Lord, Lord, help me to preach now that I am alive. Help me, Lord, to preach now that I am alive. Let me preach the word without fear or favor. Not counting my life, so worthy as to hide it away from death. Help me to always give my resources to the spreading of the gospel. Help me to be useful now that I am alive. Because the night is coming when no man shall work. The day is fast spent. The night is drawing near. Wake up. Washman, wake up. There is time now, but there will always be a time that there will be no time. The night is coming so fast. Tell the Lord, Lord, give me zeal to preach. Round up your prayer. Lord, may this word not be used against us on the last day. But help us to make good use of it. So that instead of the word becoming a judgment to us, it will become something that will bring commendation to us. Fill us with zeal that even as we go out right now, we we'll preach your word. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at or info at God bless you.